In this presentation we're going to look at sales revenue which is part of net income on the income statement. And we're going to go over here and look at how accounts receivable in cash which are assets on the balance sheet get translated over here to sales revenue and the net income. Okay, here's a sales revenue account which is part of net income on the income statement and when we have a sale it would we'd credit the sales revenue and that would increase net income. Now there's two accounts here that we associate with the sales here. They're sales return and allowances and sale discounts. Both of these are contra accounts to the sales revenue. That is here we have a debit decreases the sales revenue and a credit increases it. Now it's just opposite here with these contra accounts. A debit increases the sales return and allowance and a credit reduces it. So they're working these these two accounts or these two contra accounts reduce sales revenue. So let's look at a typical uh, sale here. Say we sold ten thousand dollars worth of goods on credit to a customer. So we debit accounts receivable for ten thousand dollars and then the corresponding entry here would be to sales revenue where we credit it for ten thousand dollars. Next let's look at a sales return and allowance. Say customer re returns three hundred dollars worth of goods so we credit accounts receivable and reduce reduces accounts receivable by three hundred dollars. Then the associated entry here would be to sales revenue and allowances where we debit it for three hundred dollars which increases the sales revenue and allowance. Next let's look here at a sales discount. Say our customer was going to pay us a thousand dollars here on, on account. So we credit accounts receivable for a thousand dollars that reduces accounts receivable and then say the customer did take the sales discount so we debit the sales discount here for twenty dollars which increases the sales discount and then the balancing entry here would be to cash this is the actual cash that we received nine hundred eighty dollars and that we debit cash here for nine hundred eighty dollars which increases cash so at the end of the year here we're going to close our sales contra accounts to the sales account and come up with net sales for the period or the year. So here let's look here we got these uh, contra accounts we got the sales return and allowance and we got sales discount so we had uh, in the sales return we had a debit amount here a plus amount of three hundred dollars so we go in and we credit that for three hundred dollars and then uh, the associated debit entry here would be the sales revenue for three hundred dollars which reduces the sales revenue. Same thing for the sales discount. We had a debit amount here or a plus amount of 20 so we credit that and go up here and debit the sales revenue. So we take a sum here of the sales we had minus the contra accounts here and we come up with a net amount here of 9680. So that's our net sales for the for the year. Now the sales revenue gets uh, closed through an income summary account which goes into retained earnings and it becomes part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet. Let's just take a look over here at the income statement and that's this income statement summarizes what we've done here on closing our contra accounts to the in our accounts contra accounts to the sales revenue. So here in the revenue section we've had sales and then we've had we subtract out our sales discount our sales return and allowance subtotal those then we subtract those from the sales for the period and then we get a net sales amount. So here just to summarize it we have sales minus sales discount the sales return and allowance uh, minus that and we come up with a net sales amount. Now in the next slide I'm going to explain how sales affects inventory and cost of goods sold. That is when we make a sale we should also record an invent uh, transaction against inventory and then the associated cost of goods sold.
Okay, now let's look at the sales side of a perpetual inventory system. So, first off, let's make a sale here on accounts. So we made a sale here for $10,000, debit accounts receivable for $10,000, and then the corresponding credit entry would be to $10,000 on sales. Now, remember sales is a revenue account, so we increased revenue. Now, remember, when we make this sale, we also have to account for the inventory. So. Uh, we have to account for it at the cost basis here. So let's just say it was $6,000 for that inventory at our cost basis for it sold. Then we also have to uh, assign it to our expense account here, cost of goods sold, 6000 debit cost of goods sold for $6,000. Okay, now let's say we had a sales return, customer return $300 here. We reduce accounts receivable for $300 and then we go over here to sales return and allowance we debit that for three hundred dollars now remember we also have to account for it in the inventory account here so uh, the cost basis for that return uh, material here was two hundred dollars so we increase in debit in inventory increase it by two hundred dollars and we also have to decrease our cost of goods sold by two hundred dollars so when we have, a, let's look at a sale discount here. So let's assume that a, a customer is going to pay $1,000 on this account. So we reduce accounts receivable by $1,000, and then they took the sales discount here. So we have to debit or increase the discount here. Let's say it was 2% and it was $20. And the balance would go up here into a cash account here where we increase cash by $980. So what we want to remember here is that when we're uh, selling goods, we we have to uh, assign a, the gross amount here to uh, cost accounts receivable, and then record it in the revenue account up here in the sales, and also account for it on the inventory. We have to account for it at the cost basis. So we have to reduce inventory by that amount at the cost basis, and also assign it the cost of goods sold. Same for the sales returns and allowance. If we reduce that at the gross amount here, we take the sales allowance and then we increase the sales allowance here. And then at the same time, we have to adjust our inventory, but we have to adjust that at the cost basis. And we'd adjust the inventory for that return and also the cost of goods sold. We would reduce cost of goods sold in that case.